Hello and welcome Chiquita and Shani of FemCon. Um, super excited to have you guys presenting FemCon to the Chief Medichicks leaders today. We will hand over to you. Thanks, Nikki. Hi, um, my name is Chiquita Sell and I'm a co-founder of FemCon. Okay, so um, about us. So we started uh, FemCon, um, which is a community to inspire women to embrace their full force feminine power. So essentially that tagline for us is all about women or inspiring women to realise their full potential. So whatever that might look like for each person. Um, so what does that mean to us? Um, so it means that we want women to create a, we want to create a feminine economy and that's part of what femcon is um, we're doing a female entrepreneurship com conference in october um and the the remit of that is to encourage women to be bold and take action so we believe that through business and through creating multiple income streams people can create women particularly can create their feminine economy um, so we are an inspired and fully expressed community of women living unapologetically with zero fucks for external judgment or expectation. And we want to empower women to envisage and design a life that is uniquely their own and which, you, you know, showcases their own, um, I suppose, unique blend of talent and brilliance. And we want women to prioritise their own physical, sexual, spiritual, emotional, mental and mental wants and desires. So the platform for this is obviously FemCon, and that's going to be a combination of events, a community membership in the part in the future, um, and our podcast FemPod, which we have some news about, which we might share a little bit later. So the problem. Um, so following the isolation of COVID, obviously everyone was working from home. We realised that women particularly were yearning for face-to-face -face connection and I think everyone was very, very tired of doing everything online and in digital format and I have an events background and so I decided that it would be a good idea to just start an event and um, so then I suggested this to Shani uh, who very kindly decided to get on board with me and we held our first uh, conference in August of 2022 uh, and then we followed that up with a long lunch uh, the first conference was about um, yeah again inspiring women to embrace their full force feminine power and because it was our first one I think we've learned as we went that we were probably trying to do too many things at once we had sort of four pillars that we were trying to work to and kind of cover off a full day of different speakers uh, speaking to each of those pillars and I think it was just too much um, so what we've decided to do going forward is to break our events down into specific topics or specific areas uh, that we think a woman, a modern progressive woman would want to draw inspiration from. So this one is about female entrepreneurship. So a lot of women now have either their own businesses or they have side hustles. A lot of women started um, side hustles or businesses during COVID from home and it is the fastest growing demographic of um, people starting businesses in Australia and have been for quite some time. So we feel like it's a burgeoning area and we love business as well. And it's part of one of our remits is to obviously inspire women to have multiple sources of income to understand, you know, um, yeah, to, to be running their own show, essentially having some independent financial independence because financial abuse is actually, um, quite rife in Australia, sadly. So our solution to this is FemCon. And so this is obviously, as I mentioned previously, a community. Um, we're going to be holding events. So we want to do more regular events. At the moment, it's a side hustle for both of us. We're working on the, on this part-time, um, just the two of us. And it's, it's a lot. Uh, but we want to do more events. Uh, we want to, in the future, release membership and do member-only events and merch and things like that. Um, we have done season one of our podcast, which is called FemPod, and that has actually just been picked up by DM Podcast. So that's going to be distributed through a network soon. So we'll get hopefully ads and brand partnerships through that. So hopefully that will be a form of revenue in the not too distant future. And in the future, we also want to do a female-focused co-working space. So that will obviously be for members. Um, we want to sort of have a podcast studio in there, a photo shoot area for content for product, you know, for businesses because content obviously is very important with social media these days. Um, yeah, and just have a space for women to come and, um, yeah, run their businesses and where they can connect as well. Okay, so our vision is to inspire women to embrace their full force feminine power. Our mission is to help women realize their full potential in every area of their lives. And our purpose is to create a community of inspired and fully expressed women living unapologetically with zero fucks for external judgment or expectation. Okay, so business overview. 
Um, the why, obviously, is to help women to step into their full potential. The how is we're going to deliver this through events. We want to write books, have a membership, you know, build our community, podcast, and female-focused co-working space. The what, obviously, is pretty much same, same. Um, so SWOT analysis, um, our strengths, we believe, are I've got a public relations and events background, which I think is a pretty good skill set to have uh, for business. Uh, Shani's social media skills and profile is a, is a strength. She's very big on content and does that for clients as well as herself. Uh, she also has really good relationships with some um, very good brands as well who she's been working with over the years. I think our messaging is fairly strong and I don't think any there's another sort of community with this type of messaging in Australia. I think um, I did try and join a couple during COVID and it just wasn't for me. I was a little bit conservative. So I feel like we're a little bit more sassy um, and I like that. And we're about to have a national distribution of our podcast. So we're hopeful that that's going to bring um, a little bit more attention and a little um, sort of expedite our growth a little bit. So our weaknesses, cash flow, it is a very much a startup. We are self-funding at this point. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm pushing shit uphill. <laughs> but we will get there. We will get there. Um, so time is weakness. We are both working part-time on it. Um, we both have other things that we do and that pays the bills. And so that takes the precedence at this time. Uh, and I think we're foot, full, yet to fully refine our offering or our business model and understand. Um, you know, the financial revenue model, I think it's all um, ideas at this point. And we are obviously moving forward with the events because that's um, the skill set that we have at our disposal. Uh, but we definitely want to do some other things as well. Um, can I just add something to what you're just talking about in regards to the financial model? So I think that it would be really, really important for you guys to work out what that looks like and start from the top and work down. What I mean by that is work out where you're going to get your biggest bang for your buck. Focus on that so that you can start bankrolling yourself and stay there and work down. Yeah, and that's definitely not a skill set that we have. Um, hence, I think that's your first coach identified. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Um, so the opportunities we think are to leverage off other female communities through partnerships and collabs that we are currently doing. Um, obviously, the podcast to be distributed nationally. Um, we believe there's, you know, there's no female-only co-working space in Australia to date. One Roof Women did sort of start that back in the day, but they've gone um, just online. So, and I think that's the model they're pursuing. Um, major sponsors and brand partners. So we have some really good established. Um, relationships with um sponsors and we've had that from the outset which has been really really good so um we're you know highly grateful for that actually and we're going to launch um a sister brand in march for international women's day month um which is sex self and stuff so that's going to be um a little bit more of the yeah the sex self and stuff um topics because we've just been working with dm podcast to work on our the segments of our podcast and one of them is going to be called is called sex self and stuff so this is going to be a you know a flow and effect from that and also sex cells everyone was talking about them um threats more established brands in the market with deeper pockets and bigger founder profiles and also our inability to um <laughs> the lack of a financial model. <laughs> um, okay, so did I just skip a page or? No. Your competitors. So like-minded bitches drinking wine. So they have just very rudely um, launched BitchCon. Lizzie, I think you're speaking at that. Um, we've got biz, Business Chicks, uh, League of Extraordinary Women, but they've died a little bit. And then we've got One Roof, um, who is just online. They don't seem to do a lot in the physical realm, which is, um, yeah, no, yeah, fine, I think. Um, how will we compete? Well, hopefully well. <laughs> um, so it's our passion project, culture only, but we both want to make this our full-time gig. Uh, in the hopefully not too distant future and um, we're both very committed to making that happen and our competitive advantage is basically us ourselves 
so the support required, um, we need to refine our business model and obviously that's the financial model as already um, identified, uh, get a cash flow plan in place, um, timeline to launch the membership and what that in, um, in, in involves. Um, so skills are required, we need a lot of skills. So our business structure, the revenue model, um, we have thought about, because I was aware that One Roof actually raised money for their um for their space, but Sheree ended up just giving the money back because COVID hit. So there is, you know, appetite hopefully still for for that. Um, so even like working with someone, like even speaking to say Carolyn to work out whether that would even be of interest, we don't even know, but we'd love to do a co-working space. Um, yeah, how to do it nationally, uh, defining our co-founder roles probably a little bit more um, in detail and then potentially some introductions to major brand partners for future sponsorship opportunities. And our big goal is to be a globally recognised community of women living in their full force feminine power. Nice one. Thank you. Um, you can stop sharing your screen now if you like and then we can get, um, you can then see us. <laughs> yeah, I say, it was so disconcerting. Like I couldn't hear, I couldn't see. It's oh, fine. Really it's cool. all Very good. Cool. Okay. Um, so, Bianca, do you want to kick us off with any Anyone questions um, uh, or I, advice up front? It's more of a comment or more of a piece of advice is that until you work out what your financial model is going to look like, all it is is, as you just said, um, ideas on a paper, which is absolutely fine, um, and that's where all good businesses start from. But creating how you're actually going to um, make this a profitable organisation, you know what, if you go and get funding, what does that look like? You know, and then you can figure how that funding actually occurs. If it's crowdfunding, is it, you know, private investing, is it whatever it might be, um, working out that financial model yeah, cool. And so, um, Chi and Shani, I know you've run FemCon already and, you, you know, you had quite a successful event and, and it is quite well known already and you've only sort of run it in the first year and you're going into your second year. So you guys have essentially funded it up front, but you are bringing on corporate partners and you do have, you know, I'm, I'm aware that you do have a financial model of different partners and pop-ups and so forth. There is a much bigger plan and I think Bianca's expertise will be really helpful for you in really working out that financial model and looking at how you prioritise what you do next and how you fund that and looking at different funding um, source models, be it through corporate partnerships, be it through your membership or, or be it through seeking investment. So, um, yeah, really great advice, Bianca, and, and certainly something I think you can help them with from a coaching point of view. Um, who have we got next? Lee. Well done, girls. Sounded great. Um, my bit of advice would probably be that the value prop needs to be thought through for all the different audience segments. So, you know, it's great that you've already done it and maybe there's like they're an alumni level versus new people that might be coming into your audience. Like, what am I going to get out of this? Is it about connection? Is it business advice? Like what are those entrepreneurs deeply looking for that if we nail that one thing in that one day at the event versus, um, cause I'm, yeah, I'm just sort of thinking it through with my marketing lens on and then nailing what that value prop looks like to the partners that you're going to bring on board. Like what do they get out of it? So that at every one of those tiers and levels, you're getting that super clear and that, that pitch. Because I think the why and the how and the what are really good, but it's just bringing that forward through to those, convers you know, the commercial conversations with a partner, like what's in it for them. Um, I just think that part of it needs to be thought through a little bit clearer. Uh, and I think, you know, if I put my coaching lens onto things, it would be around how do you make the time to create this, you know, from not being your revenue, key revenue thing and that transition through from your other bits and bobs that you're doing, which are not bits and bobs, but all those other revenue streams that you have into the main one. Um, so I would, you know, if, if I was working with you, it would be probably on that final slide around roles and responsibilities, um, who do we need as external support 
people like for running the event or the is it dm that's doing the podcast and just being super clear of how to efficiently use your time to do like what you know the effort versus impact ratio of like least effort for best impact and maybe that's also looking at that financial model initially of going you know where do we where do we get bang for our buck and then how do we use our time effectively around that that would be my bits of feedback for you but it sounds wonderful I'm just bummed I can't make it this year nice one thanks Lee over to you Lizzie hello um I think I think my thoughts were very much echoing what what Lee was um, mentioning and I'm just trying to put myself in the shoes of obviously I'm a new founder um so I guess it's understanding you know what kind of founders are you targeting is it all all women founders or is it a specific um type of founder is it someone that's you know starting out in their journey or that is you know one two years in um I think that can also help maybe shape your point of difference because if I'm not mistaken like-minded bitches started as a Facebook group I feel like and then it was like it was basically really for that startup stage where it's like hey need a manufacturer I need a supplier for this and then everyone would jump on the Facebook post and and comment and that's kind of what I associate like-minded bitches with with that real I guess um the infancy of of building a, a brand or a company and um yeah I think maybe just honing in on on um, and it, it, it's great if it's all founders or if it's a specific type, but I think just getting a bit clear on that um, and then also how you stand out, you know, against like, like-minded bitches um, other than sort of your, I guess, your attitude uh, and your cheekiness and all that kind of stuff is is actually what will I get out of your community versus like-minded bitches or, or the other sort of communities as well. Nice one. And Karen, over to you. Yeah, um, fantastic. Thank you. I I love it. Love the concept. Um, I was just going to ask a couple of things. You said business structure. How are you, what's the structure that you've currently got in place, the legal structure? Have you set up as a company? What's your current legal structure that you've got underneath you? Partnership. Yeah. Have you registered though? Have you got, are you an ABN, ACN? Are you a, yeah, a sole? Yes. Yes. We did it through our accountant. So um, I think we've got an ABN, just an ABN. Okay. Awesome. Um, That kind of legal structure is also really important when you're thinking about funding down the track. Um, So it's good that you've um, got that set up as a company um, because that's sort of what investors look like. They don't like when you're sort of set up as a sole trader or into a trust um, kind of structure, which is good. Um, Business chicks, how do you compare to them? Because they're they're probably the one that I was thinking of um, when I was thinking about Femcom. I know they're not as edgy, um, but have you sort of thought about sort of your differentiation points from business chicks? Um. Well, business chicks, I think, um, I think it has a little bit more of a corporate feel, um, possibly than what we do. I know a lot of corporates sort of get on board and buy their female employees, but their model seems to be bring in a celebrity who's just written a book and then schlep them around the, you know, nation. So, um, you know, they're established, they've got a membership. Um, I'm, I've not ever actually been a member to be fair, um, but I think things have changed since COVID because they obviously went in and did a lot of masterclasses on. Interesting. And I, I guess just from that perspective, it would be really good to put some thought into how you can take potential business chick, chicks members or have them have both and, and what your offering is. I have been a business chicks member in the past. I think I agree, G. I think it turned into something that it wasn't when I originally joined. What I really loved about it and could be something you could really build into the FemCon offering was that, you know, every time you turned up to an event, you were actually, you felt like you were welcomed and a superstar and everyone wanted to talk to you. Like it was a really, the, 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 kind of the space that they worked really hard to fill was to make everyone feel very included so that's something that you know that real kind of welcoming entry point um I don't think it's like that anymore so I just wanted to raise that the other thing is do you know Cherie from One One Roof do you you know her I, I don't know her well but I know her we have met I wonder if it's worth having a conversation with her about the co-working space. I actually didn't realize that they'd closed up but I'm not surprised because obviously they did get battered through um 
through COVID and, and I know that, you know, they are doing quite well with their online offering. It'd be interesting. I would reach out to her and, and get some ideas around what actually happened, what worked, what didn't work. I've hosted, I used to host a number of events at One Roof um, and see who invested in them. I'm sure Cherie would be open to kind of hearing about those sorts of things and giving you. So I'd probably recommend we, um, reaching out to her. And the only other other thing that I was thinking about I do a lot of stuff with Startup Network um, that used to be Startup Vic. I think what I find really interesting with their model is they've really categorised the stage of where entrepreneurs are at. So there's the pre-seed startup group and everything they do with your pre-seed startup group is very much catered to that level. So we're providing them with a lot of um, legal masterclass content based upon, you know, before they've, um, you know, had any seed capital. So where they're sitting at that stage and then they've obviously got, you know, when they've moved on to scale ups, they've got quite specific female groups in there looking for funding. They've just launched their female founders circle, those sorts of things. So in terms of your business model, I think really thinking about, you know, the identity of those specific stages of the entrepreneurs that you want, female entrepreneurs that you want to engage. And then the femcon's great, what next? So how are you then re-engaging them straight after, whether it be a mixture of, you know, here's, here's the podcast, get onto our subscriber list. I mean, you, you probably all got those things set up and then, you know, some content, some education. So just really keeping them on the go, which is not such high intensive um, events for you to fulfill and, and your partnerships are key. I mean, Startup Vic use us, Startup Network use us for legal content. They don't have to do anything. I organise all of it. So leveraging off partners that you can bring in, I think, could be a really clever way that you're not having to create that content yourself. You're just creating the community to deliver it to um, could be really interesting. So they were just a couple of things. And Lyft Women, have you, do you know Lyft Women at all? Is that like Uber for women? No. So Lyft Women is a female crowdfunding platform. That's Sheba. Are you thinking Sheba? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Lyft that's like driving around. Oh, okay. Maybe. I don't know. There's Sheba, which is the female one. Um, so I know Irene Sang really well. She's the founder of Lyft Women. It's an equity, it's what's well, a reward crowdfunding platform at this stage. The reason I um, suggest is that I think they would have a lot of um in their membership that would be really interested in what you're doing in FemCon. Um, and also there's an opportunity for you to kind of build. The thing I love about what they do is that you're not only are you getting money to do the certain things that you need to do, and it's, and it's only small amounts initially, but you're also getting your community base being built through those activities. So um, have a look at Lift Women. And if you'd like an introduction to Irene, um, yeah, I'm more than happy to facilitate that. Thank you, Karen. I will never say no to an introduction, but I think that what you just asked has just been really clarifying. I've realized that I don't know if we're going to be just like a business event. It's more a lifestyle brand or something. And maybe that's what we need help with because that is just one pillar and we don't want to like pigeonhole ourselves and shiny jump in. But, you know, that's why we had, we try to do different pillars because we don't, but I think what we're grappling with is how to do it well, because you don't want to overwhelm people. And that's the thing. And I think um, we have, we like talking about other stuff over and above business and not every woman has a business and not every woman wants to. And we do want to have a really inclusive community. And I don't necessarily want to just be known for like a female founder or female entrepreneur brand. I think that we want to support women to realize their full potential in a lot of different elements of their life. And that's just one segment. So I think what we might need help with as well is really narrowing down what that is and what it looks like and what how we communicate that so it's really crystal clear mm -hmm. and I think that will also yeah, inform sorry what our I heard will become anything that anybody do want it to said be I can't see or hear anyone very inclusive so just so, off the back of what she um, said um yeah, and sorry I, I did that the question was, um, again but I think that what's yeah. important for us yeah yeah we can hear. On is that we have found for Chi and I yes. you know we're grown women we still feel like we don't fit into a lot of the spaces um and we also think that's okay we're we're good with that um but something about the both of us is we are both multifaceted and there are so many women out there who I don't know not one woman who's just the one thing we're either wearing mum hats we're wearing business hats we have multiple streams of income um 
you know, it, I, I think it's really important for us to capture everything, you know, women's sexuality and it, all of it trickles into the one big thing for us, which is Femcon. So whilst we can't have too many pillars because we tried that at the beginning and when we did that, it turned into all kinds of different things. It wasn't to say that it wasn't amazing and electric, the first conference. Um, it was, but I think for us, we still, we really want to work out how we can feed to all parts of what the, you know, what the woman is and the way we all live differently. And that's really important for us, a sense of belonging in the community for women, even though we are all completely different. Chi and I couldn't be any more opposite. Um, I think that's a really good example. And so, yeah, that's also really important for us with FemCon. Nice one. Um, thank you guys for, you know, all the input from the other leaders. I think, you know, in my knowledge and obviously, you know, Chi, I know you because we've been working together with um, Chiquita and co as well. And, you know, I'm pretty familiar with FemCon. I think what works for you guys is you have you have the event background experience in Chi, you've got the PR experience um, that, you know, Chiquita and co brings, and you've got the social media influencer and marketing experience, you know, through what you do, Shani. So I think your ability to leverage, you know, once you've nailed your proposition, your ability to tell your story and engage people, yeah. you've got it. And yeah. a lot of new business startups don't have that. So I think that's a really important strength for you guys to focus on. Yeah. I think where we can help you is really honing in and focusing on what FemCon is and the pillars that sit off it and then building out a financial model that supports each of those pillars in terms of the activities that you do. And that really comes back to what Bianca was talking about and also what Karen was talking about with your legal structure is really important because if you do want to attract funding, you need a really rigorous governance structure for your business and and really importantly early on be really selective with the kind of investment that you take on otherwise you dilute your business and then you inhibit your ability to attract invest investors later so i think you know all the um feedback that the other leaders have given you you know i'm completely aligned with i think the the main focus for you guys and where i think we can help you up front is really nailing your proposition nailing who you are and what you are nailing your governance structure and the legal model that sits around it and your financial model and then you'll take off the one thing I will say with your co-working space let's prove that out and do a lot of research because you could spend a ton of money and lose a ton of money really quickly there's a lot of co-working spaces that are struggling right now you could deliver what you want to do leveraging an existing co-working space where you create an environment together I think that's a much better way of starting you can see how successful it is you can learn on the fly on someone else's money and if it doesn't work, yeah. you can pull out. You know, I think that's a really important thing. And, you know, it's something that I've looked at as a, a sort of roadmap for Chief Metachicks as well. But mm -hmm. off the back of COVID, yeah. people are really, you know, most of us are operating from home <laughs> or using some element of co-working space where we tap in and out. So the days of big office spaces being, you know, having people five days a week are no longer. So I think um, think about what you create and how you can utilise this kind of casual, I want to collaborate, but then I also want to work from home, particularly in the new business startup and, and founder space because we, we all bootstrap it to start with before we, you know, build that capability. So there's a real financial model and roadmap to, to do and I think, Everything that you do, you've got to create a little minimum viable product to test it before you invest. So test before invest is is probably the main, um, you know, piece of advice that I would have. But, um, yeah, love your presentation. I love what you're doing. I think, you know, for one year in, you guys delivered an amazing event last year. And I know you're going to deliver another amazing event in a couple of months. So, You've got the you've got the key ingredients. It's all there. I think your model is incredibly differentiated because you are edgy. And so, if we think about business chicks and some of these other groups, you know, they're they're very corporate focused. So, business chicks has got a lot of corporate support. They created so much energy and vibe, and people walk in and they're pumped, and they walk out and they're pumped. But it is much more corporate, and it is much more about telling inspirational stories of other leaders to bring people together to network. I think what you guys are doing is much more lifestyle, which is awesome. You're bringing people together. Yes, you're 
playing at the moment, it feels like in that very entrepreneurial space where people might not yet have started a business, but they might be thinking about it or they might have those side hustles. So I think let's get really clear on your target audience, who you want to reach and how you Mm -hmm. want to bring your brand to life across different products and services and potentially merchandise and how you create that edge. Um, But I think you've got all the key ingredients there. You just need our help to help you refine and focus it all. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can also ask at this next conference you've got coming up, you can do exit survey of some sort of what would you like to know more of? I don't know. I know that sounds very corporate-y, but, like, get some feedback from them of what would you like to know more of Um, and you can test Mm -hmm. different things within the community if you've got a social space already. So you can use this as a really nice testing, testing place for what you can build it into. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I mean, one of our things is we don't like to ask for feedback. Um, You're going to have to. No, that's what they've asked you. <laughs> like, so is there um, a way that you can uh, you can say to these cohort coming through on this next conference that they are like your, um, they are your co-creators, they are your founding membership group? So, so you're not asking for feedback, you're asking them. Yeah, of course. I was just going to say that it might be a great opportunity rather than kind of thinking about feedback of this next kind of um, group that are coming through FemCon. It's frozen. Kind of, is it, am I frozen? Yeah, that just you just froze briefly. Oh, okay. Am I back? Yeah, I'm back now. <laughs> great. Um, I was just going to say rather than thinking that you're trying to get feedback from this next group that are coming through FemCon, there's a way that you could actually say you are going to be like our first movers, our founding members of what's going to be next for us. Like help us design what FemCon can be for you for the next 12 months and what that looks like um, because there's nothing more that, you know, they'll love that, well, I'm on the journey and I'm going to be your champion and I get to co-design and co-create. So I think if you can, um, you know, use those words that they are sort of, you know, your founding members, um, it's not you going, please give us feedback and, you know, a, a rating out of five. It's actually come with us on the journey and we want, you know, we want you to design this with us. Yeah, I really love that, actually. I love that idea. That's a really good frame on it. Um, thank you. I really like that. I've written that down. Um, but I really like the idea of the lifestyle brand. I think that's like this is the first time I've actually considered that because if we couldn't work out what what we are, like it's been a real struggle to be completely honest. Like I've just haven't kind of we haven't nailed it and I'll be the first to say that um, we know what we want to achieve but it's the how and what exactly is the messaging, what is the offering, what is the, you know, because it's all very well to have all these ideas but you know yeah it needs to be what people want and we'll get on board with so um yeah we're still very much working that out which is probably very clear yeah look I think look I I think the very first thing to nail is your why um Mm -hmm. you guys are both members go into chief meta chicks world have a look at the marketing screen and the brand proposition it'll help you nail your why your why, your how, and your what. So there's a Simon Sinek video in there that's just incredibly powerful and then we step you through um, how to actually nail that for yourself. So I think there's a little bit of work that you guys can do even ahead of your coaching where you can really start to work together and workshop and then we can help you refine that. Um, Mm -hmm. I know with one of our other members, she was going around and around the grounds and it was all a bit wordy. And so one of her sessions I did with her just in 10 minutes, we nailed it just by me asking her a couple of key questions, which really focused it. And like within 10 minutes, we had nailed her brand proposition and how she was going to go to market. So do a bit of work on that, bring that to one of our first sessions, and then we'll help you really hone that in and and focus on it. But I think that's going to take a little bit of time for the two of you to just brainstorm that and think about how does this lifestyle brand come to play but really focus on what it is that you're trying to achieve why do you exist yeah. why did you start in the first place I think that's the first to that. go B oh, I just wanted to add to what you were saying then I think one of the things that's really really super important for all businesses and their owners is to nail what their what their values are as well because if you're stepping outside of your values in your business, it's never going to be aligned with you. So from a personal perspective, having a set of values that are very clear to you and then aligning them to your business will mean that you are always um, driving into your business from your own value proposition, not from um, what what sort of, I guess, um, 
sort of sits out here and may not be real. Yeah, great advice. Um, thank you, ladies. I think um, we've I've got a really clear view of what you need. So I'm going to share uh, this recording with the other leaders and then we'll work out and I'll have a chat to the two of you as well and we'll work out, um, you know, who we feel are the right sort of focus for you. But I think... I think a marketing focus, a coaching focus, business and legal is going to be really important. Um, I know you guys have got a lot of the sort of PR and social media experience. So um, I think you've got that bit down pat. So I think we'll focus on supporting you with your positioning, your proposition, your why, and then your financial modelling, your legal framework, um, and just some coaching to keep things on track. Um, I think is going to be really important for you. So I'll bounce that around with you guys separately. But thank you. Uh, great session. Really excited to, you know, work with you again, Chi, and, and to bring this to life with you as well, Shani. Um, yeah, exciting. And we all love empowering women. So, yeah, great fit for Chief Meta Chicks as well. <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs> Pleasure. Well done. Nice work. <laughs>